But what are we going to talk about today? Grail. Grail. The exciting topic of Grail. No, Grail is actually really cool. Uh, it is a, uh, it's not really a language as so much as it is a code, wouldn't you say, Sean? Yeah. So it's essentially a six dot code. A uh, six dots arranged in two columns with three dots per column. And I have here a little pegboard to represent that idea. Now, Rebecca, is this within view? Can you see this? Angle your laptop down. Okay, now I can see it. Okay. I can't see the table though for anything that you put on the table. Okay, so but if I lean it up or rise it up further like this. Now I see your face and I see the board. But if you yeah. angle your laptop down, I can see the table. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So this is a little pegboard here. It's got six pegs and or at the moment, it, well, it has five, but one fell out on the floor. So, <laughs> so we're going to have to use our imagination here, and we'll we'll say for the sake of argument, there are six pegs in this in this board. So, uh, as I mentioned, Braille is made up of six dots arranged in two columns with three dots per column. So, starting on the left, you've got peg one, two, three. On the right peg four, five, and six. So what we do is we take these braille dots and arrange them in ways to create letters of the alphabet. So case in point, letter or, uh, A is comprised of a single dot and that's dot one. So no other dots are present in the cell. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, those would not be present. Those would be removed from the cell. In fact, I'll do that now. Okay, so if we had a uh, letter B, B would be uh, represented by dots one and two. So I'll put a dot in peg hole two, representing the letter B, which is dots one and two. So if you felt the, this in Braille, it would feel like two little dots stacked on top of each other. Okay. If it were the letter C, C would be dots one and four. So the top two dots in the cell in the six dot arrangement would be filled. Okay, so one and four. You feel like a dash if you felt it uh, with your finger. And then of course two, three, five, six are not present in the cell. I'll do one more letter, okay? Just to illustrate the point. The letter D. Letter D is made up of three dots. Dots one in the left column, dot four in the right column, and dot five. So D is one, four, five. Okay, one, four, five. And these dot arrangements are going to uh, be especially significant here in a moment when I get into the Perkins Braille Writer. Okay. So just a quick summary of how a cell is arranged. Certainly there's a lot more to it than that, but just kind of a basic, basic foundation. Okay, any questions so far? Can everybody hear me okay? Can everybody see me okay? Okay, all right. So we're gonna move on and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Perkins Braille Writer. Now, some of you out here may be familiar with the Perkins Braille Writer, okay? It is uh, basically what I would, I would compare it to a typewriter of sorts, kind of a cl your classic old school typewriter. I bring it here in front of the camera. Rebecca, you'll have to tell me if, in fact, uh, Writers. Might be a little tricky. It's because it's quite bulky. Yeah, I can see most of it. So I'm going to turn it. Uh, Bring it back towards you a little more. Jeez. <clears throat> yes, I can see all of it now. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Now, this is really a, a 
fantastic device. It's it's been the workhorse for the blind for decades. I mean, I think it literally it's been around for what eighty years or more, Sean. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. I think it came about in the late thirties, and it's been the workhorse for the blind ever since. Now, it is essentially now. Let's get, let's go back for a moment. Let's think about that six dot cell that we that we discussed earlier. Okay, you've got one dots one two three in the left column, four five six in the right column. Okay, and different arrangements configurations of that six dot cell produce for us letters, symbols, and characters of the Braille uh, system. Okay, or code. Now. Corresponding to that, on our Perkins Braille Writer, we have we have keys here in the front. Keys in the front of the of the writer. So if this were facing you, or now it's facing away from me, but it's facing the camera. If you were to reach your hand forward, you would discover there are keys, and these keys there are, which there are several at the moment. Uh, some of them represent that six dot arrangement, okay? Now, in the center is a space bar, essentially, okay? That's a space after a letter or word. That, and that's the divider between the, 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 the keys that represent that six dot arrangement. So, for example, to the left of that space, bar is a key. That key, which I have my finger on right now, represent, represents dot one. Okay. Next to that one, further down, is dot two. Further down is dot three. So these are the dots that represent, the keys that represent dots one, two, three. Okay. Now, corresponding to that, on the right, you have additional keys. That, uh, they are analogous to the uh, remaining dots in the cell on the right side of the cell. So dot four, which I have my finger on now, further down dot five, and then finally dot six. Okay, all right. And when there's paper in this, it's a type of paper we put in, we'll, we'll put in here shortly. You can do different combinations of different combinations of, of these keys to produce the letters of the alphabet in Braille, okay? All right. Uh, for example, if I wanted to, to write the letter A, I would find dot one, which that is what A is, dot one in the cell, and I would hit that and it would it would emboss or imprint onto the paper the particular character okay uh, just quickly another example letter b letter b one and two so your fingers where they would align you'd have your left hand set of fingers on one side of, of the keys and then an the opposite side on the right side for the remaining dots, four, five, and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And if you wanted to make the letter B, you would have to hit, you'd have to hit one and two simultaneously to create that symbol. Okay. All right. And we'll get back to that here shortly. There's a few other additional items. Okay. So over here on the far right, and the far left, is additional keys. All right, so over here on the far right, this is our return key, just like with a typewriter, right? And when you had a typewriter and you would type, eventually you would get to the very end of the uh, end of the line. So for example, you hear that ding? That ding is to let me know that I'm now at the end of the line, okay? And, and I would want to return 
before I then I would hit my return key over here on the bottom right or bottom left if it's facing you. I go down to my next line and then you would continue typing, okay? Over here on the left side, or my left, your right, would be your, uh, your backspace key, okay? So um, if you're typing, if you're typing in Braille and you make a mistake, uh, you have a, if you have a typo, I, I, I call them Brellos. You know, I have a, I usually, I have, <laughs> I have my more than my fair share. I don't know about you, Sean, but <laughs> Sean's been doing Braille a little bit longer than me, so he's probably a pro. But if I make a mistake, I have to backspace sometimes and scratch it out and write over it, okay? So again, turn key on the left, backspace key on the right, okay? Now, up here, I mentioned, mentioned earlier, there was a return, a lever, just like with a, a, key, you know, a typewriter, you can depress that, push it all the way back to the far left, and you get your return key going on the next line. So that lever, again, is your return key. All right, just quickly here, on top, and boy, that's gonna be kind of hard to show because it's further back on the writer. Wow. Wow. Sorry about that. It's so heavy, I swear. All right. Up here on top is a device, a little part of the brailler. It's called the embosser head. Okay, and underneath the embosser head. Yes. Scoot the, um, the Breller towards your computer more. We can't see the very top. Okay, maybe not. There you go. All right, thank you. So the embosser head is up here. Oh boy, I'm gonna try to move a Sorry about that, guys. I know it's very loud. All right, just to make sure you guys get a good picture on that. It's so slippery. All right, the embosser head is on top of the Perkins Brailler. Under, it's basically what it imprints the Braille onto the paper. And underneath it are actually the, the six dot arrangement that I've referred to. It's very small, you can't see it. But when you do those combinations of those keys on the, the front here, um, the embosser head has this corresponding cell underneath it that it pushes down and prints upon the braille uh, on the paper, the braille symbol or character, okay? All right, so there are a few other additional items, but why don't we just go ahead and load some paper into this. Let's definitely have some paper here. now. This paper here, I believe it's probably like about 11 by maybe 10. Um, it's uh, made from a particular kind of card stock. I'll hold it up there. Can you see that, Rebecca? Yes. Okay. So this card, this is a, a, a particular kind of card stock that's appropriate for a Perkins Brailler. However, you don't have to use this. I have put regular print paper into these and typed on them. And it's, for the most part, it's, it's worked reasonably well. Not as durable, but works reasonably well. You can get a lot of this paper via, like, I think you can get it through the American Printing House for the Blind, right, Sean? Right. Yeah. And there are other outlets as well. You can find this paper. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of quick pointers couple of quick pointers when it comes to loading paper into the Perkins Brailler. I got, I'll share a quick story with you. So a long time ago when I was in college, I was learning Braille from a professor. And eventually I got to the point of the curriculum where I had to learn how to use a Perkins Brailler to type. And the first lesson basically was how do you load paper into the Perkins Brailler? And 
I thought <laughs> this is going to be easy, right? This is this is just what, I'm just putting paper into a typewriter. How hard can that be? So I proceeded to to attempt to put paper into the Perkins brailler, and it took me about I don't know about 20 minutes to half an hour because I kept putting the paper in there in different ways, thinking that it was going in. And in reality, it wasn't. Sean, have you ever had that particular challenge? Yeah, especially when it's coming through like the front portion. Uh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes. All right, so I'm going to share with you a couple of things that I learned years ago that may help make that process a little bit less frustrating. Uh, so you guys can have that in your in your repertoire in your in your arsenal. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back up here for a second. Let's talk about that embosser head. Now right now I have the braille, the brailler facing me. Okay. So the keys are not facing you. But the embosser head is up here returned all the way over to the far left. And yes, it's snug up against the inside of the Railer here, right there above the roller bar. And what I find is if you take a piece of paper here, this cardstock, you find the bottom left corner, put that bottom left corner of the cardstock of, of the paper underneath the embosser head. That should be returned over to the far, far left. Okay. Now, the reason why I do that is it just kind of helps me to make sure that the paper is properly aligned with the, the inside of the Perkins. Does that sound about right to you, Sean? You, you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the bottom left corner should be obscured by the embosser head. And the rest of the paper, you can feel with your with your, one of your fingers that it's aligned there in between the two roller bars. Now, when you think you've got it all nice and aligned, what I would recommend is that there are two levers. There's a lever here on top. They both connect with each other, two levers. It's your lock le lever. And what you would do is push that forward, okay? Because that locks that paper in place once you've got it in that sweet spot underneath that embosser head, okay? And the next part is when you take the paper, there are two roller bars here on the side of the Perkins. So you want to roll it towards you. Okay. I'm not rolling it towards me. Uh, look at this exciting braille footage here. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> yeah. They're going to start singing there. Don't worry. Although I can't, I don't know if Sean may break out into song, but I, I certainly am not. Now, wait a minute. I'm feeling a little bit of resistance here, Sean. Feels like there's a little bit of, a little bit of crunching there, huh? So you didn't so lock it. I didn't lock it very well, apparently. I didn't get that sweet spot. So now, look, here's what happened. Is going in there, I kind of, kind of crinkled that bottom left corner of that page. So if that happens, a good rule of thumb is to find a different corner that hasn't been wrinkled because that wrinkle there can really well cause a wrinkle in your plan no pun intended now i'm doing the same thing i'm putting the other corner that's not wrinkled underneath the embosser head no. also one thing to keep in mind too is is don't attempt to put the paper in place while you have the, le the lock levers pushed forward they won't let you put it in all the way with respect to the paper. So pull those away from you. Make sure you got it in there on between those roller bars. Lock it in place and then bring it forward. Rolling it towards me. All right. Oh, I don't have any I don't hear any crunching, Sean. So maybe keep our might have it right. Keep our thumbs crossed. You know, sometimes braille can be a bumpy ride, but not with bumpy this. start. Bumpy start, yeah. We might say well, this was a, a bumpy start, yes. We're just full of riveting braille jokes here today, aren't we, Jean? 
the other thing, <laughs> of course, is when you put the paper in and it's not lined up right on the left side. And then as you advance the paper, it pushes against that left side and starts crinkling up. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And then if it gets into forwards with Perkins, you have to do a big, or this number where you have to go in and pull it out towards the front. It can get real. Here. I've you had put, to take, mm -hmm. take the front panel off but get the paper out it's, oh goodness I'm not gonna have to it can be before. rough yeah now most of the time though I think if you follow some of the the suggestions we're giving you today that process will be a little less frustrating but it but again it's one of those things that in the beginning you think yeah this isn't a big deal I'm just rolling paper into a to a typewriter but uh, it, can, it can be a little tricky for for new new braille Braille students. Okay. Now, right now, I have Rebecca. I'm going to look this up. Can you see that? What am I looking for? Uh, the paper there. <laughs> Bring it down. Okay. There you go. So I have about an inch or so of paper remaining coming out of a, at the top of the Perkins Braille. Okay. All right, so I can, I can roll that in a little bit more, but it won't let me go much further, but it's right there where it should be. And the embosser head at the far left, basically you're at the first line, okay? Oh, by the way, Perkins Brailler, it has a handle that is retractable. It's on top. Can you see that, Rebecca? Yes. Okay, so the handle it uh, is particularly helpful because this is uh, it's not a it's not a light not a light device sometimes. Well, the new ones are the new ones are yeah, but <laughs> I'm sure there are people in the past who are blinded when going to school they've had to carry these things behind them or with them. Did you have to do that? Me, song? I started Braille in first grade. And I probably started using a Braille or I mean second or third grade, but if you can imagine, that's like a nine-year-old, eight, nine-year-old walking around this device. It was wow. heavy. I mean, on the other hand, it's one way to get in shape, right? Yeah, what would you say? It's probably like 10 pounds. 10 pounds. Yeah, you probably could do some dumbbell curls with us, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you could, you know. Write some braille and then work out and then write some braille or who knows? I don't know. It's your own discretion when it comes to that. <laughs> but yeah, some of the newer ones, they are a lot lighter. But the disadvantage I've heard with some of those is because they're made out of plastic, they're a little less durable, would you say? Yeah, it's just not braille if you're... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I handled one one time and I felt it's just my own perspective. Maybe you guys listening out there have your own experiences, but I felt like I really couldn't hit the, 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 the Perkins keys as hard as I way have hit them with a actual classic Perkins writer. They like also was, make an electric braille brailler as well. Yeah. I think I used one of those once. And don't Shoot. they make a one a one-handed braille? A uni brailler, yes. Yes, we yeah. actually have one. I should have brought one out. Yes. So that's for people who have some dexterity challenges. Um, perhaps maybe a person doesn't have the full use of one of their hands. Um, I believe the uni brailler, you can push down braille on one side of the Perkins keys on the brailler and it'll stay down. And while at the same time, the other hand that's not impaired, you can uh, you know, add to the, the dot arrangement to create the letter. So yeah, there they do, those are, those are around. Okay, so I'm gonna do just a couple of quick things and then we're gonna move on from the, the Perkins, Perkins Brailler here, okay? All right. 
So, Sean, you're going to be impressed with me. I'm going to try to Braille backwards. Ah. Uh, yes, so people can see what I'm doing here to some extent, okay? Because now the keys are facing away from me. It's not how you would normally write Braille with a Perkins Brailler, but I just want some of you to be able to see for a moment anyway how your hands might align, okay? So if I wanted to make an A, I would hit dot one, then a space, then if I wanted to make a letter B, dots one and two, I would hit one and two, dots one and two on the Perkins keys together. Help me out, Sean, what's the dot position for the letter C? That'd be dots one and four. One and four. I don't know, Sean, I don't know. Are you sure about that? Kinda. <laughs> Of course, he's sure about that. How many that. times have I written a C <laughs> in my lifetime? Braille. Right, right. Okay. All right. So C, one and four. So typically what would happen is if you were doing this in a, a conventional way, is that you would have your index finger on your, your dot in position one on the Perkins key, then you're on the left hand, and then you're on your right hand. You would have your uh, corresponding left or right finger on the dot four. Right, Sean? Right. You hit them both at the same time, and that would make the letter C. Uh, D, what did we say D was? What one, four, say? five. One, four, five. D is always a tricky one. You know, for some of my students over the years, uh, D has been uh, kind of a kind of a difficult letter. I don't, I don't know about you, Sean. Was there any letter in the beginning for you that caused you to kind of scratch your head? Mine was D. D was a uh, was I think M and N were yes. kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, M and N. You know, N is funny. It, to me, it always it always looks like a question mark. The general yeah. shape of it. I had a student of mine years ago pointed it out to me. I never forgot. All right, so D one, four, five. Okay, so now I just created four letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D. All right. All right. There's a little bit more to it than that, but those are just some of the fundamentals, okay? Fundamentals. I'll lay that aside here for a moment. Certainly, you know, when we, we, when we teach Braille, the Perkins Braille is probably not the first lesson out of the gate, right, Sean? Right. We even had to teach the alphabet and teach them other basics like tracking. And so you have to have, you have to have knowledge of the alphabet. You have to know the dot positions, right? If you didn't know the dot positions, you wouldn't be able to write them. So cart before the horse, but, but anyway, so any questions so far? Questions, comments, observations. Rebecca, any hands raised? No. I'm sorry? No. No. Okay. One last thing I was going to show before I forget, because I would be remiss if I didn't show this to you guys. Just a little secret from I learned something from my own repertoire. I don't know about some of you guys out there listening, but I like to work smarter, not harder. How about you, Sean? Sean does, of course. Um, so sometimes uh, when I was in college, I would have to um, write something and braille for myself and for somebody else and i didn't want to have to write it twice and so somebody at, at a point in my life pointed out to me well you you can take two pieces of braille 
two pieces of braille paper, that is, and load them both together into the Perkins, which I'm doing right now. So I have two pieces of paper, the same kind of braille paper, got them locked in place, pull them in, aha. So Sean, you probably see where this is going, don't you? I do. Mm -hmm. This is the audio copper copier of Braille. Yes, right. <laughs> did you say oh, audio? I, I think I did. I'm, I'm, it's kind of weird. I got headphones on now, and I can hear myself talking. Uh, so it's, it's a carbon copy of Braille. Yeah. You said audio copy of Braille. Oh, I did. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Sean's got a lot of irons in the fire over here. He's a lot of juggling. All right. So. I have two pieces of braille in this Perkins braille writer and whatever I type there actually will be a copy imprinted on the one below so I'm gonna write I'm gonna write Sean a message here okay uh, and he'll have to read it on zoom while we're broadcasting here hopefully hopefully my spelling is so uh, isn't too bad Decided now. Almost out of Houston, we have a problem moment there. All right, so I have now two copies of Braille of the same Braille, but I wrote it on, uh, on two pages because it imprinted through the one on top the one on bottom and actually it makes to me sean makes the second it page seems a little more crispier, crisp. doesn't it here it's that second yeah. page it kind of got a little ripped there at the top uh -oh. so we had a had eight paper malfunction okay we got here um uh, hi sean how are you question mark um, sorry i can't think of anything more clever than that there <laughs> There is a, a A, B, and C, and D uh, above that, that. Was, but yeah, anyway. I used earlier, so yes. Putting um, multiple pieces of paper in there is a good way to braille business cards. Oh, yes, yes. In fact, it's been one of my ongoing projects here at White House to braille business cards for many of our employees here on staff. Uh, we have a Braille business card, but they've not always imprinted it very crisply in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been kind of a little faint sometimes, but I find putting them in there uh, has helped to make them easier to read. So, all right. Any questions, comments about any of that? Because if not, we're going to move on to some additional items here. Hey, Sean, you may remind them how to raise their hand. Oh, yeah, very good. So if you're dialed into the telephone and you want to raise your hand, you press star nine and that will raise your virtual hand. You will be recognized on the computer. It's all Y. Uh, and if you're on an iPad, you go down to the bottom right corner to the more and go in there and there's a option to raise your hand from there. No hands. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Sean, why don't, how about let's transition over to something a little bit techier, perhaps? So we talked about the Perkins Braille Rider. Good, good, a good, reliable device, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about some more electronic ah. items here. Um, Kevin, we're probably going to want to mute you. So this is a Braille embosser. This is in our um, technology center. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, 
So a Braille embosser, think of a Braille, a, like a printer for Braille. And so this device, uh, I believe it's made in uh, Italy or Sweden. Uh, I think Sweden's actually correct. Um, it is, uh, it, it talks along with um, outputting Braille. So see if you, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but if I, I press the menu key here. Open menu mode. Um, so it's got a menu set, a system uh, where you can set all kinds of settings where you can uh, you can actually have it emboss uh, a demo file, which I'll do here in a moment. But um, we connect this to multiple, we're going to have this set up with multiple computers here in the, the ATEC Center. And so you can, uh, you can connect to this device either via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, be on the Wi-Fi network at some point, um, and then also as a cable connection. So um, I, could, uh, I could actually emboss a file from my iPhone to, uh, to the Brailler here. Uh, or now if you're on a computer and you're trying to emboss Braille, you have to have software that's called a Braille translator. Um, so one of the most common ones is uh, it's called Duxbury, and so think of a think of a type of Microsoft Word for Braille. Um, Duxbury is a highly uh, highly involved piece of software. It's for making graphs, and I mean it's really there's a lot. You, you know what we do here as far as uh you know sometimes we'll braille menus or kevin will braille lesson plans for um or, or braille lessons for his students that's really the most basic form of using duxbury there's a whole lot of stuff you can do with it that is way over our heads <laughs> currently at least um so anyway once you uh have your file ready you send it to the embosser and so the, the next thing you're probably wondering about is, hey, there's some big box that this embosser is sitting in. So we've got the embosser here, the paper's down here, the brailled on paper actually comes into the bottom. Menu mode without taking any action. Okay. So it popped me out of the menu mode because I didn't do anything. Um, so I'm going to have it emboss a file. And one thing that you will probably notice is that this thing is really loud um and that's what this box is for it's called a um um what is this called it's a um it's a muffler um so when it's open like this you you should be able to hear it through the zoom uh when i close the window close these doors you probably won't be able to hear it it just it really makes it quite soft in in sound open menu mode print print previous document print demo file tactile view demo bones of hand here we the go selected demo file will now be printed <laughs> I don't know if y'all could hear that. Oh yeah, that's crazy. What about now? Well, you can barely hear it right now. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, that's the uh, it's the Indec Basic DB5 Braille embosser. There are a number of, of Braille embossers out there. Um, one thing I learned recently is that they have Braille embossers that uh, the big uh, 
I guess companies that make uh, that emboss textbooks for students in school and some of those things they take up uh, well they take up a lot of room but they also put out something like a hundred pages a minute of Braille so you can only imagine what that sounds like all right, so I'm a big fan of the Braille display, and Kevin has become a big fan of the Braille display. And we'll uh, have a couple of different ones here, um, along with a what's called a note taker. So let me hold a couple of these up. Um, this one here is called a Focus 14. Uh, it's, it's the model is the fifth generation blue. Uh, the Focus line of Braille displays has been around for a really long time. Oh gosh, probably back to the late 90s. Um, and about, let's say about two or three years ago, they came out with this version of the display. So this is a, so it's a 14 cell display. I actually had it upside down. So that's actually the correct way. Um, at the top here, you have uh, the eight Braille keys. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, I think Kevin said Braille is six dots. Um, so you would have dots one, two, and three on the left. You have a little key here in the middle. It's called the menu key it's for like system options. And then you have dots four, five, and six on the right. And they're kind of, the keys are kind of laid out in kind of an ergonomic style. Um, the dot seven and the dot eight are actually your uh, seven on the left is your uh, back, uh, backspace key. Dot eight on the right is your inner key. So it still follows the same conventions as a uh, Perkins Brailler that Kevin was showing. Uh, you have what is called uh, nav rocker switches. They're like switches that will go up and down. So you can hit the bottom end or the top end at either end of the 14 cells. You have the 14 cells across here and then above each cell is a what's called a cursor router key. So there's 14 of these little buttons above each cell. So what can you use a Braille display for? Well, uh, quite a bit of things. Um, I have here on my neck, take this off. Um, I use Braille display all the time. Uh, this is actually, this is mine. This is a Focus 40 blue. So this is the 40 cell version of the 14 cell I have here. So um, both of these displays, um, have a couple of connectivity options. Um, one of them being Bluetooth. Uh, there are five Bluetooth channels on both of these devices. So I could be Bluetooth to uh, my phone, my iPhone, uh, an iPad, a Mac computer, and a PC. So what's that? That's four. Um, I guess if I had a second iPhone, I could be connected to that. So I could be connected to five different devices and then switch between each one of them and use them independently. And so at my desk right now, uh, I normally have my Braille display either in front of my laptop or to the left. And I'm always connected to my phone and my computer. And I've uh, recently actually learned the Braille commands for um, controlling windows from the Braille display. So not only can I read my documents and email and everything in Braille, I can also write them. I can use uh, commands to open programs and close them. And it's a, oh, oh man, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, any questions so far on uh, either the Braille display or the Braille embosser? Uh, focus is the first two items I've shown here. And I'll tell you, Braille displays are kind of like cars. Um, they all have different options. Um, some of them 
are stylish looking. Some of them are just a box. Um, and really in the early, early stages, most of them were just boxes. They just plastic box, um, no real detail to them. And now, I don't know, they're trying to make braille displays look a little stylish, not just boring. I guess a lot of people are starting to use them and out in public and such. The next display here I'm going to show is called the, uh, the Brilliant. So the Brilliant displays are made by a company called Humanware. Uh, if I didn't mention, the Focus displays are made by a company called uh, Freedom Scientific. Uh, Freedom Scientific is underneath the uh, umbrella of Vispero. B-I-S-P-E-R-O, um, and you may be familiar with Freedom Scientific because they make JAWS and Zoom Text and uh, Open Book and other programs like that. So Freedom makes uh, the focus line of displays. Humanware uh, is another company. They're out of New Zealand, and they make the brilliant line of Braille displays. They also make several magnifiers that we have here in our technology center uh, along with some other devices. Uh, here's the the brilliant it is similar kind of a kind of a similar ergonomic look to it. Um, the focus that I was showing a moment ago the part, top part here is made out of uh, brushed aluminum and uh, this brilliant display is more plastic. It's all plastic. Um, it does have, I like the feel of the buttons. Um, the braille has a pretty nice feel. It also has the cursor router buttons across the top here. However, these on this display are more of like a, kind of almost like a touch sensor, kind of like a touch screen when you push them, the whole unit kind of vibrates. So that's one thing that's a bit different on this display. It also has five channel, five Bluetooth channels, one USB. Uh, both devices uh, connect and charge via USB type C. That's kind of the new standard in USB. Next device. This is the Brilliant Display 40 cell. So I, I showed you uh, the Focus has a 40 cell display. So does the Brilliant. Now this one, they, they changed the design a bit. It is brushed aluminum here on top. The keys are not quite as ergonomic. I'll hold, let's see if I can hold both of them up. So they're not quite as ergonomic as the 40 cell. Um, so let's see here. The last item I will mention is a device that I just, that just got delivered today. Uh, this is called the L, the L Braille. That's with an E-L space Braille. Um, and it is a, uh, what's called a note taker. So it's quite popular in schools with, uh, students in school. It's also popular in uh, colleges. Um, think of like a PDA type device, or, uh, this is kind of like a portable laptop for the blind. And so, um, one thing that you get with the L Braille is, yeah, it's portable. It's got a, a really hefty case here. It's got a strap so you can wear it around your neck. Um, it's got two stereo speakers at the top here. They're covered up by the case. Um, and then it's got a set of keys across here that are kind of act like function keys. And to blow it, you actually you just have a 40, a Focus 40 fifth generation Braille display that's connected in to this dock. 
So the dock is more of the computer portion and it's actually running Windows 10. Uh, it's, it has Office on it, um, has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's got 160 gig uh, hard drive in it and two gigs of RAM. But really, it's more, it, you know, it's basically a, a portable computer without a screen. As you know, if you're blind, you, you're using Braille and speech, then you don't really need a screen. You can connect a screen up to it. It's got a couple of USB Type-C ports on the right end here, along with regular USB ports. Um, it's got a memory card slot, and uh, I I just got it today. I haven't had a chance to really mess with it too much beyond turning it on. But what I, what I was saying about it being uh, basically, well, it's in the case, so I can't take it out. But um, if it wasn't in the case, I could just take that Focus 40 Blue off of the dock and it just use it uh, as a standalone device. So that's kind of my coverage of the electronic Braille devices. I'll let, uh, I'm gonna get off here and let Kevin unmute and we'll continue our little discussion. All right, guys, any questions or comments or thoughts about anything Sean discussed? We hope at some point in the future that those of you listening might be able to come up to the lighthouse here in the future and maybe get a hands-on demonstration with some of these devices. That'd be great. Wouldn't that be great? Would. Yeah. <laughs> Sheila has her hand up, guys. Okay. Go ahead, Sheila. Sheila? Sheila? You'll probably have to unmute on your end as well. To unmute is Alt-A on the computer. Am I on now? Yes, you are. you are. We can hear you just fine. I'm a little confused on the Braille note take, not the note taker, the Braille display. And you're saying it connects to all these other devices. So if you get an email, instead of listening to it, the Braille display will for lack of a better word, print it in Braille for you to read it that way? Is that the, is yeah, that the yeah. So on it? Kind of, yeah, kind of. So at, at, I probably should have gone into this more. But I can at, demonstrate it with my phone. Would you like me to do that? Well, she's talking about how the, the Braille shows I up. Know, I'm gonna, I, can do, I can show that with my iPhone. Okay. So I have it right here. All right, so this example, may, it may translate to an extent. I think I know what you're asking, Sheila, is how do you read the email on the display, correct? Well, I guess my, my overall question is, is, is that the purpose of the Braille display is to, is to, for lack of a better word, translate something that's not in Braille into Braille so it can be read that way? Yeah, so, so basically there is a, a, a type of translation software in between whatever device you're using, such as say an iPhone and the Braille display. So the print that someone who is sighted would see on the iPhone screen shows up on in Braille on the Braille screen, on the Braille display. So if I'm reading an email, I'm reading the print all the, however, in Braille and it's digital Braille. So there are each cell on the braille display um, it actually has eight dots um, so the six dots on the top part are the braille the the two bottom dots are for like underlining showing different formatting changes but i can read the because it changes so as i pan either across that line of text on the phone it's constantly updating those pins to display that correctly in Braille. Okay, all right. Now, does 
it work backwards? Can you yes. respond? So, to the, so I think probably what you're asking is uh, if I get done reading that email and I want to reply to it, can mm -hmm. I do it from the Braille display? Yes. Yes. Uh, so think, think of a Braille display um, as, a, as a Braille screen so you're able to read in Braille on the device uh, anything that's sent to it. And then it's also like a keyboard. It's a Braille keyboard, but it's still a keyboard. So I can, and I do this all the time. Um, I was, I was even texting, you know, between me and Rebecca during the meeting, like, you know, she'd say, move the, the camera over, you know, a little bit, or, you know, just, we give tips to each other as we're on these meetings through, through, uh, you know, through Braille that way that's something we can read and not everybody else is going to hear discreet, yeah. it's discreet so oh yeah a lot of times I, in fact with my iphone i will turn speech off yes. and use nothing but braille um okay. either for facebook for messages for email all kinds of stuff so there yeah there's i mean in, in zoom and these things we've done that's a perfect example there's there's a lot of times where uh, either Kevin or Leslie or Rebecca, you know, we'll send messages back and forth that, you know, stuff y'all never hear just, you know, to either move the camera a certain way, you know, something along those lines. We're sneaky <laughs> like that. <laughs> now, right, you're telling them all our secrets. I am. <laughs> okay. what, what is the difference between the Braille display and the note taker? I, underst I understood you to say that it had a Braille display in the one you were showing. It had a Braille dis the Braille display as part of it, but then it did more. Yeah, um, they're, they're popular in the school districts and in college, not as much with adults. Uh, I th they are... Um, the best example, the best comparison I could give is they're like similar to a, a, a note, a laptop. Um, they're a little bit less, have a little bit less features. Um, there, there's another one, there's another one we have here that's actually still in the box. I hadn't even taken it out yet. It's called the Braille Note Touch and it's uh, it's a it's a note taker that's made by Humanware. It's the same company that makes the brilliant displays, um, and it's got um, it's kind of got its own um, it's got its own word processor. It's got its own email program, web browser, that sort of thing. But it's in a menu, so when you start the device, you have choices. You have like a menu of programs you can run. So it's, it can be simpler. Um, you still have to learn how to use the note taker and all the commands related to it, but it, it's kind of more simple. It's not, it's not as involved as say, learning to use JAWS and self, Windows. Self and it's more self-contained. Okay. 